So welcome. It's in with the computer guy. And having talked about our table of content, remember we said that we are going to begin with the chapter one, which is the introduction to ICT, and we are actually going to be saying what actually ICT means. So when someone talks of uh, ICT, what do you really understand by ICT? For example, you've been at home, or you have been at home. You've made a call using your phone. You've connected to internet using your phone. You've used WhatsApp. You've used the Facebook to communicate or chat to your friends. You've used, let's say, Jumia to order for a product online. You've connected devices, for example, a phone and a phone, and transferred videos and audios. You've kept data on your computer at home. You use a laptop, you use a desktop. You have, let's say, you want to go somewhere, or you want to eat something, you order that item, they bring it at your home. You've located places over the internet using your device or your phone. So all those ones are going to be actually be discussed in what we call ICT. Remember, ICT is not a single item. It is just a collection of different items that come together to form a complete task. You have actually used this a camera. You have connected a projector, displayed some information there. All those are related to ICT. Let's continue. And before we begin explaining what ICT is all about, let's look at the expectations. What do we expect in this chapter? Or what are we supposed to learn in this chapter? That means that before leaving this chapter, you must be able to explain what ICT means to someone. For example, you have a granny at home. You have to be able to explain what ICT is all about to her. And she understands it. Let's, uh, let's first of all talk about the keywords we shall be looking at. Remember, we have ICT and we shall explain it in full, which is information and communication technology. We shall talk about the hardware, which are specifically the physical or the tangible components of a computer. Something that you can touch and fail. Software, these are actually the programs that run on your computer. You have a phone, you install WhatsApp. That WhatsApp is going to be a software. Remember, it is intangible. So it can tell your hardware what exactly you want to do. We shall talk about peripherals, those component, external components attached to, to the computer. For example, we can have a printer, we can have a keyboard, we can have a scanner, many of them, external components that we attach to our computer. And they are telling us that the objectives we have to get from this chapter. By the end of this chapter, you should be, should be able to explain what ICT is all about. When I ask you what is ICT, you can as well be able to tell me what it's all about after this chapter. You'll be able to identify common ICT tools and their uses in various fields. For example, a mobile phone. What do we use a mobile phone for? For making calls, sending messages, and others. Use various ICT tools. For example, can you use a camera? Can you use a projector? Can you use a mobile phone? Can you use a computer? And lastly, you have to be able to appreciate the safety precautions for the different ICT tools. How am I able? How can I use a component actually in its right way? How can I be able to use an ICT tool when I'm not damaging it actually? So we shall look at all these items into 
this chapter. So they are telling us that we have an introduction to ICT. In this chapter, you will learn about the meaning of ICT and appreciate its various applications in daily life. Remember, you can hardly go any day without using ICT. An example is you and the mobile phone. You cannot go any day without making a call or using your phone to connect to the internet. Can you really do that? I don't think so. And they're telling us that just imagine the world without ICT. How would the communication, transfer of money, security, transport, learning, among others, in our lives would be? Just imagine that world, actually. Because in communication, all the days we used to write letters, and they would take months or days without reaching the, fi the final de destination or the person we wanted to communicate to. But nowadays, we can actually use a mobile phone to call that person in just less than one minute. We have actually made our message clear. Then transfer of money. In older days, buses could transfer money and they could take long to reach. But nowadays, we use mobile money. The Western Union, we can transfer money from one country to another. We can use ABSA and others. Security these days. We leave our homes, but we can install security cameras. Those are the CCTV cameras. They keep watch over during our absence. In transport, computers have been used to monitor the movement of our planes, trains, and other components or other devices. We have smart bicycles, which were not there in now on the days. Learning has also, made, has also been made easier. Long distance learning. Many of you use Zoom. You study from home. I make up a lecture or a lesson. When I'm inside, you attend the lesson via. It can be Skype. It can be Zoom. It can be GoToMeeting and other applications that you can use. That means that we cannot go any day without using ICT. It is hard nowadays. Therefore, hardly a day passes when ICT does not intrude in our lives. ICTs are used daily in one way or another. People are connected through telephone networks, the internet, and the world web, well, and the world wide web. Many of you use internet, you buy data, you connect to your phone, you chat to your friends, you make research, you make phone calls. So we cannot do without ICT. So in the next tutorial or next lesson, you're going to be actually looking at uh, actually what ICT means and what those initials actually stand for. Thank you for watching. It's been Henry the Computer Guy. See you in the next video. Bye-bye. I sign out.